Branzino, sea bass or just bass. Whatever you choose to call them, the European sea bass has been a target species of mine since I started my fishing journey earlier this year. I know they're delicious eating and I'd watched all the online fishing channels talk about how satisfying bass fishing can be. Look at that, tell you what, fishing don't get much better than this. I had cast countless lures into the Dorset coastline myself in search of one and after six trips was yet to figure it all out. But that's okay, I've learnt with fishing that sometimes the only thing you'll catch in a session is some knowledge of what to do differently next time. Having said that, my lures were feeling lonely and the blank bass sessions were starting to mount up. Which brings us to here. A somewhat eerie Christchurch morning on the water. Um, it's, it was a 4am wake up call this morning. It's currently 5am now, just gone 5. And we're out to try and catch this elusive bass. I am determined up at, crack, at the crack of dawn. I've also got some extra luck on my side. Today is my birthday. And I thought, what a better day to catch my first ever bass than on my birthday. I come prepared with some extra weapons as well, some secret weapons. Sidewinder laws, which after reading online, uh, everybody swears by different laws and different techniques and all sorts, or whatever works for them. I'm pretty much convinced that a fish will just eat anything that's put in front of it, if it's the right conditions, the right day, and it fancies it. However, a lot of people have said these sidewinders are an absolute must in, in any lure box. So, We've got some. So we'll have a seat, see if they do the trick. But we're heading out, as I say, just gone 5am. It's pretty overcast, there's a bit of a sprinkle in the air, um, a lot of fog and kind of, the visibility's not great today, or at the moment, a lot of it will probably burn off, but the wind is low for the first few hours of the day. It does pick up later, which is why I wanted to get out early and, and make the most of it. We've got a westerly wind, a westerly kind of just breeze at the moment of only about six, seven knots, which means it shouldn't be too bad out there, uh, but it does pick up quite a bit later in the day. Let's head out there, see what we can catch. Do you have a fancy trip down to Muddyford or Hengisbury, which is where I'll be kind of um, fishing today? You're gonna have to have a boat. It's difficult to get to by foot, it's a bit of a walk, but you can take the Muddyford ferries. There's a couple of them. And they'll literally go from that point there to there, where the beach huts are. And you can explore all of this area. It's highly recommended, it's good. Okay, conditions are somewhat favorable. Tiny bit of a swell, but absolutely fine to be honest so we're going to make the most of the um the calmish conditions head out for some mackerel and then we're going to come inland off of hengisbury try for that bass let's get to that first mark We're over a spot that I normally like to fish for mackerel. Oh. It's just telling me that I'm at my mark. Um, all we've got today is just three little sabu sabikis, kind of the sand eel type ones. These have been doing, seem to be doing quite well lately. I've been fishing off the purple ones, off purple feathers. Uh, hit and miss. Um, so we're gonna give these a go, see what we can get. Right, don't seem to be getting too much luck here, um, but what I'm going to do, especially with these conditions being as alright as they are now, I'm going to, over there where Hengisbury is, is kind of where I was going to sit for the next few hours for most of my session, um, but I'm going to go try the reef, see how calm it is there, because if it is, that always provides mackerel, and there's also a wreck somewhere out that way, there is a buoy, um, so I'm going to charge out that way, which is where I want to do most of my fishing today, and we'll see what we get. We should hopefully have a bit more luck there. Straight on, on the new mark. Oh, have I lost it? I might have lost it. Oh, I was too busy trying to put my camera on. Right, we found the Mackie. I'm assuming there's a mackerel. Felt like a little one, but he was definitely on. Yeah, I can see him underneath us. 
Right, we'll pick up a few here and then we're, uh, as I say, heading inland a bit for some bass. Come on, back fishies. What I tend to do is let it drop to the bottom. So that's our bottom. I know that my weight's on the bottom now. Bring it up a few turns. And then I'm probably about two thirds down then. What you can do is you can count your reels and you can see how many reels you get to, till you get to the top. But if you don't want to do that, then do what I just did. <laughs> and guess. Come on. Look at what I'm looking at right now. How am I not catching? Can't be the, it can't be the feathers. The feathers I know are dynamite. Let's try it off the back of there, shall we? We're in. We are in. What have we got? We have got a very little mackerel. I am happy to see you though, I am. First fish of the day, we have not blanked. Ugh. Just caught, cool. I knew I switched out my feathers actually, I switched to the uh, purple ones. And I'm glad I did. Just typical though, isn't it? <laughs> I tried these purple feathers for the last two sessions and blanked both times. So I switched out to the, uh, the sandy or kind of whitey ones. Didn't catch anything. Switch back to the purple today. Catch within first cast. I actually think that little fish, because that's quite a fairly small mackerel. I think it was on my rod for a little bit longer there, because I was I was casting out my lure, trying to pick up anything uh, off that. And I picked up my rod to reel it in, and um, felt something already on it. So I think it might have been sat on there. I didn't even realise, but oh well. It's in the boat, which is all that matters. All right, I'm going to try for maybe one or two more mackerel. Um, then we'll head in for the bass and we'll focus on just the lures. I keep saying it, but <laughs> that's the plan. I've had one mackerel, there's loads on the sounder all around here. All just this stretch here. Um, but yeah, all along here, there's there's a little gully there that I captured on the sonar, and it's it's um like full of fish. You'll drift a bit. You got some here as well, have you? Yeah, this this whole line, just this side of the ledge, they're all sat underneath. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five. Yep. Yeah. Look at that, birthday luck in. Up until this point, I'd spent the first couple hours on the water making the most of using feathers, which usually guarantees some good fishing, whilst casting my spinning rod out with a few heavy lures, hoping to find an intrigued bass when this happened. That counts. It's a little bass <laughs> on the feathers. Little bass, <laughs> tiny one. It counts. Yeah. Right. A bass is a bass, and it was on feathers. I wasn't even targeting it, but it counts. It's gonna have to go back. It's tiny. Maybe I should try and like. There we go. There's a thumbnail. Huge bass. No, I'm absolutely buzzed though. I have to get this back in, but it's, you can tell how all flared up it is and the gear, it's a brilliant fish. I wanted to catch a bigger one on the lures, we might still, but to get one, I don't know, it just feels very accomplished. Uh, yeah, I feel great. <laughs> a bass, finally! Alright, let's get this one back in. Yeah, he's kicking. Off he goes straight now, look at that. Awesome fish. <laughs> I am made up. I'm absolutely buzzing. Oh. Let's 
get on. Still so made up about that bus. It was tiny, I know, it was so small. But it was so small, I know, but it's still a bus, and that's all matters. So I'm absolutely made up with that. Sorry, I thought I was only on my feathers. What I'm going to do now though, I'm going to leave these feathers out because it'd still be nice to get another mackerel, but I still want to catch a bass on a lure. That's still something I yeah, need to do. So I'm going to leave my feathers out, see if we can catch anything on that. That's a good thing with feathers as well. You can catch anything on them. Bass, grass, pollock, mackerel, scad, all sorts. Um, feathers will catch you anything really. But I'm going to set this up, leave it out now, keep an eye on it and just have a few flicks of the lure now to focus on the lure because I want to catch a bigger bass. Ah, oh, can't take my eyes off these feathers now. Another scad. We'll take it. Yeah, how you getting on? Oh, it went crazy over that side. I, I kept trying to get my lure out, but my feathers kept going off. Okay. I've got about eight scads, had the one back on the back. Yeah. Currently just trying a few flicks of the lure here. We're about three meters of water, and just kind of slowly drifting, bobbing around the bay, to be honest. Um, that's the Hengsbury head groin there, and we've got a mix of ground here, as I say, it's about three, 3.6, 3.8 meters here. Just, yeah, giving these sidewinders a little go. After around 30 minutes of drifting around Hengisbury with the lures and no luck, the excitement of the bass and scad frenzy from earlier started to wear off. So I headed back to deeper water in search of some mackerel. First cast, and I'm in. I've dropped it. No, here it is. Ooh. Oh, lovely. <laughs> oh. You know what the best thing about it is? Is that as you learn spots, as you learn how to fish, it's just knowledge. And the more knowledge you have, the more confident you have in your fishing and the more ability you have in it as well. And the more results you get, such as two lovely mackerel. Chop with that. This has been, I know I planned for it and it is my birthday. So, you know, a bit of luck, but this has by far been my best session. I've had the bass, loads of scad, I just action. And now mackerel. We got three mackerel, and I'm um, should be on for more. So we good. These are good eating size as well. Yeah, yummy for breakfast. All right, I caught then within first cast. Within about ten seconds. Let's see if we can do the same again. I might have drifted a little bit if they're off that mark goes right over the top of the ridge. Basically what it does in this, this spot, it goes from four meters down to about seven, eight. You can literally just plonk your, your uh, feathers right into the bottom of the gully, into the into where it drops off, and you guarantee the fish most times. So I did catch. Sorry, didn't mean to do that. Just hit in the face. Big bit of seaweed. It is a bit snaggy around here. That's the one thing I would say. In this area, I'm gonna stick it behind me a little bit. I'm gonna drop down. Let's see if we do catch. Alright, joke's on me now for being cocky on that last drift because I've now drifted over a couple times more. Um I'm not getting any bites. <laughs> That's fishing. I think I'm gonna give it a few more drifts now. Um see if we can't just pick up one or two more mackerel, because I know they're here. Just gotta find them. Um, and then, then we're gonna head into the harbour and have a classic little cook up. Oh, with that being said, I'm on. This is a, well, they're a big fish or a good line. What have we got? Oh, I see a couple. I think we'll have a couple more mackerel. Yeah, beautiful. Absolutely. Oh, he's felt hooks, he's felt hooks as well. Right, well, with that being said, wow, yeah, he came off. One of them came off, and then I re caught him by the tail. So this guy caught in his mouth, and then as I was reeling, he came off and managed to hook himself again in the tail. That's just lucky that it's definitely my birthday. 
And finally, when I get the drift spot on, when I literally hit it on the, there's this one little mark in this gully. It kind of curves around, or like there's a, there's a peak, like a hill, and it kind of spreads out. And there's one point at the bottom of the, 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 uh, the bottom of the hill, if you like, or the gully, dip, whatever you want to call it. But whenever I plug my feathers in, in there, it guarantees me fish. In fact, both times I've hit it perfect, I've caught two each, two mackerel, so it's just hitting that spot on. Probably drifted on a little bit more over it. Put these in for a minute or so. Then head back over, try and hit that mark again. And then we'll head in. It's always one last cast, one last cast. Yep, see, see, yet again, I hit this, bang on. Bang on that mark, and I'm in again. It's quite a little one, actually, this one. It sat right in that gully. I think I'm gonna put this one back, guys. Tiny little min uh, mackerel. Too small for eating, but a lovely fish nonetheless. Oh, hang on. There we go. Tiny little thing. Smallest thing of the day. Ooh, caught him. <laughs> Off he goes. Right, I think that's enough fun for today. Oh, brilliant session. I caught my bass, which was the ultimate goal. Wasn't by the means that I intended and definitely wasn't the size that I wanted, but I still caught a bass. And it was my first bass, so I can tick that as off the list of species that have been caught, uh, that I've caught. Uh, so that was silly buzz. Mackerel, got loads of mackerel, uh, got loads of horse mackerel too, which is going to be good for bait. So I'm going to head in now, um, cook up some breakfast, and yeah, enjoy my catch of the day. Ugh. Well, can't all go perfectly. As I was coming back into the harbour, I saw on the uh, on the fish finder that there was quite a few fish in the run, which I've seen. There's a lot of people fish that area as well, and I've seen people uh, catch bass and all sorts. So I thought, oh, you know what? I've got a bit of tide left. I'm going to anchor up, which I did. Um, walk to shore, take my rod around, and just cast the lures out. So I'll give myself ten casts. See if we can't, you know, push the birthday luck and get a bit of, um, get a bass, basically. Get a bigger bass, a medium bass, which is ideally what I wanted. Anyway, cast out first one, brought in quite a lot of weed. I was like, oh, okay, that's fine, you know. So I moved to the left a little bit, cast a bit more into the actual channel to try and get clear of the weed. And, uh, and my lure, well, it must have been the swivel, snapped straight off. Um, so I lost the swivel, I lost the lure. I've got three of these sidewinders, which I was putting all my faith in today. And on the last cast of the day, it yeeted itself off the rod, never to be seen again. And I thought, okay, that's my sign and my birthday luck is definitely over. So <laughs> I uh, begrudgingly um, did the, the walk of shame back to the boat where I am now. I've just picked up anchor uh, and now I am sat tied up to one of the mooring boys in the harbour. So here I'm just going to, um, I've got all the mackerel in the, uh, in the bucket. I'm gonna fill it one of them off and cook it up, tasty snack. I've got nothing to go with it. I'm just gonna have it pan fried um, straight out of the pan, which will be delicious because it's fresh. And yeah, I'll enjoy that. All right, so I've picked the biggest mackerel of the day, which is I'm gonna have for breakfast. I'm just gonna fill it this off now. Um, I won't put this in the video because I've already done it in my other video, one of my other videos at least. Uh, and there's plenty of kind of filleting um, tips and guides videos to do on how, on how to do this. So if you are interested in seeing that, um, then what I'll do at the end of this video, I'll link to another video where I do go through it in a bit more detail. Um, or just YouTube it, as I say, because there's lots of information running around. As I say, simple cook up today. Uh, I haven't got any like posh herbs and spices, although I do have, and this is my boat oil now, not for the engine, for cooking, lemon flavored olive oil. So give that a go. Hopefully it should be nice with the mackerel. Tell you what, if there smells anything to go by, this lemon oil might be a game changer. It smells incredible. Like it smells like really fresh lemony fish smell, if that makes sense. Which I guess is exactly what we're dealing with. But yeah, I guess the taste test will tell, but 
what did they say? You you eat with all your senses or you eat with your eyes, your nose, I don't know. It smells amazing. Right, these are done. Oh, and they look incredible. Look at that, flaking apart just how we want it. I mean, fresh mackerel is just beyond, it's so different to anything else. The lemon doesn't come through too strongly, but there is a little hint, almost like a aftertaste of just lemony, which is, yeah, lovely. So I'm gonna tuck into this. Uh, I think a well-deserved um, fish breakfast. Thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Hopefully it will be um, a bit of a bigger trip out with some snorkeling and stuff that we've got planned coming up over the next week or two. With the uh, August seems to be calming down weather-wise and the wind seems to be um, settling. So yeah, we should be able to go out for some big day trips, which will of course include some fishing. But snorkeling, all of that stuff, paddle boarding, um, all to come. But yeah, but for now, until next time.